Hi, my name's Alex, aka at Dynasty Guru NFL. You're tuning in to Dynasty Hot Seat. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We're jamming along here, Alex. <laughs> the, the great intro music. Song. Welcome back to the Dynasty Hot Seat, the only Dynasty show out there that is a certified inferno. We're back, and Alex, we don't care. It's way too early, but we don't give a damn, right? We're gonna we're gonna draft some of these rookies for twenty twenty four. Great to have you back on the show, mate. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, I. Uh... Did well in my college fantasy football season. Uh, football, football yeah. ugh, did well in my kind of college fantasy league this year. So I'm, uh, I think I'm going to do okay in this draft. I think so. I've had a sneak peek at a look. <laughs> it looks pretty good to me. My favorite thing so far. I've done. This is the third one of these I've done. Everyone's. I think, of course, this is the time of year. Completely different. Like very, very different so far. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to watch that sort of slowly take shape over the course of the season and then just everyone conforming to what you've got for us tonight, right? That's what the final verdict's going to be, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to it's gonna change so much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. We don't even know if all these guys are definitely going to going to come out and declare. We expect right. uh, uh, most of them to, but yeah, there could be a few a few surprises in there. But before we get into, you know, the real, the real meat of the show, the mock draft, uh, we're going to sort of talk about traits of this draft class and what we've noticed as a whole and just want to say anyone who's new here on the channel welcome along make sure you're hitting that like and that subscribe so you don't miss out and lots more mock drafts coming your way very soon but alex we're going to chat about general sort of traits and what have you noticed about this draft class in particular i mean I think there's a couple of positions where there's a lot of depth yeah. um quarterback being one i mean early draft takes are that there are some decent enough quarterbacks who probably won't even be drafted uh and that's that's kind of like like a sam hartman for example people yeah. are talking about day three if that and yeah. he's been good <laughs> he's been very good um so you kind of feel for even the kind of tier after him like what what's their fate going to be um and similarly like there's a lot of good receivers around there um and i think given the way that the nfl teams have currently stacked up i think a few of them will slot straight in but i think a few of them will end up just going into the abyss because there's such good strength and depth yeah, exactly. It's so hard to be like that number. We've even seen it with someone as good as Jackson Smith and Jigba, right? It's so hard to be that third choice receiver, even if you are incredibly talented. And yeah, mm-hmm. like so many of these teams now have got two really good starting receivers. So a lot of these guys are going to come in and have to start, you know, playing third fiddle right off the bat. That's going to be tricky. But the good news is there's a lot of really good receivers, but running back, a bit mm-hmm. of a different story, right? There's there's no real cream of the crop at the top unless unless you've got so one guy you think is like definitively better than everyone else. But I'm seeing a lot of a lot of CMC miness, right? There's one guy I think is ahead of the rest. Um I think that's Trey Benson. Trey Benson. Uh, he's he's got he's got the Dalvin Cooks about him. I really like him. Ooh, you're a big Dalvin Cook guy as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well uh, ex- excluding this season. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's uh, yeah, Benson. Benson looks real, real nice. Us too. I still a couple of these guys. I think there's a lot of sort of second round picks that you might use on running backs that could end up being being good. It seems like a year where you want to collect quite a lot of these second round picks. I think if you're if you got early first round picks, you're you're laughing with the if you shot at the top. Yeah. But I quite like the sort of depth at at second round at the minute. But of course that that could all change. Of course we don't really know, but. We're gonna we're gonna roll into round number one. We're gonna get this mock draft started. And do you have any surprises for us at the start, Alex? Or are you taking the same one hundred and one that everyone's expecting you to? Um. Yeah, I think Marvin Harrison 
is probably the clear favourite, even in a Superflex League. Um, I still think that he... Well, I know you're thinking Caleb Williams is probably the 101 there, but I think yeah. Marvin Harrison. Um, and again, that's purely because I think there's probably one of seven or eight teams where he will be number one receiver yeah. from day one. Yeah. Whereas Caleb Williams, in terms of instant impact, uh, depending on where he lands, he could play second fiddle. Yeah. Um, like, you know, there was loads of talk about Caleb Williams going to Arizona, for example. But Kyler Murray is not done and dusted by any means. No. If he ends up being drafted by the Cardinals, it'll be a transition year. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of recovering that value or what have you, um, it's probably better to go with someone like Marvin Harrison, see your value um, fulfilled, as yeah. it were, from, from as soon as you can. Yeah, he looks like he looks the safer prospect. I know Caleb Williams, obviously, he was touted as like the next generational quarterback, but he's can we call a speed of speed and say he's had a pretty bad year, actually? He's had a bad, he's had a well, he's had a relatively bad year, yeah, but at the same time, he um, he's a, definitely a very good player. I think maybe he he was protecting himself a little bit, um, trying yeah. not to get injured. Um, you know, I think he made it very obvious when he said, Oh, I'm not playing my last. Oh, I've made it very obvious that he was playing his, you know, last set of games, yeah, for USC. Um, and for USC, they've got you know a nice up and coming QB in uh Malachi Nelson, so Ooh. you know, they were kind of maybe just waiting that out. Um, but the problem with that is if you turn it off. And it's the same with every job in life. If you turn off yeah. for a couple of weeks or months, it's really hard to climb back from. Um, so more to him if he does that. Um, time will tell. Yeah, exactly. I think he's still a, that supreme talent. And have you have you got Caleb still as your like quarterback, one of the class? And is he your pick? One yeah, two? yeah. He's he's definitely number one. And probably would be pick one. Uh, Again, this is probably situational as well. Like, if I'm stacked on receivers, which I usually am, yeah. I would probably go Caleb Williams. Yeah, and then so you're sort of interchanging, but exactly the same sort of as um as Alaska's Michael Bauer. He said he said 101 and 102, fairly interchangeable, just depending on on your roster. Mm -hmm. But then uh, um at 103, are you are you going quarterback again? Then 103, I'm probably going quarterback again. Um, See, I think most people would go with Drake May. Yeah. yeah. However, I wouldn't. Um, I've got a lot of reservations um, with with May. Um, I think he throws into pressure. Uh, I think he's definitely got a bit of a Justin Fields vibe about him. Um, and I think if he tries to do what he's done at college level, at pro level, He's going to be found out very quickly. Um, yeah. yeah we and then it's talking, a big hill to climb. We were talking before the show, and, and a stat I was like slightly astonished by was I was doing a little write up about some players, and I was looking into good old Bazooka Joe Milton over there at, at Tennessee. And just I knew his completion percentage was terrible, but I didn't realize it's better than Drake May. Drake May's completion percentage over the years, I think 62 or 63 percent, which is not what you want. Especially in college, when he has like players like Tez Walker there that he can be thrown to, McCollum over there who's looked like a decent receiver, Omarion Hampton who can catch the ball. He's got good weapons, good targets. But he's not finding them. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's the case. Maybe the same as Williams. He kind of believes his own hype a little bit. Um, yeah, maybe trying to do a little. Was it, bit yeah, he's he's also without Josh Downs this year. Mm. Uh, that's probably uh, a big loss for him. Downs has you know, transferred quite well into the NFL and he showed that he's got decent caliber. Um, so losing a decent receiver like that probably has hindered him a little bit. Yeah, so who would that, if you if you wouldn't be taking May at 103, who's who's the guy stands like to you as someone that you would take at, at 103? Um, and I think I in my original 
uh, list to you. I think I put him at number four. So it's Malik Neighbors. Yeah. Uh, I I think in terms of talent and also sentiment, this guy's going to be this guy's going to hold a lot of value uh, during his NFL career. So long yeah. as he, as long as he gets a decent enough landing spot, I think he should be fine. Yeah. Um, and like, if if you don't like the idea of adding Malik Neighbors to your te- to your team at one hundred four, uh, and you know someone who does, they'll probably play more than a first for him. So you know, really smart move to put put him around. Definitely inside the top five. Yeah, I think Neighbors is the kind of guy. He just seems like I don't know if this is the best comp, but just watching him with the ball in his hands, he's got a bit of like the Debo Samuels to him, the way he moves, the way he runs, and yeah, yeah. people, right? Like just sort of that lightning in a bottle type yeah. type player. That that kind of thing, I think, translates really well. And there's a couple of receivers we might talk about that. They're just really good at like getting separation, and it's not like. You know, maybe someone will talk about later that kind of separation, but it's genuine like separation that they've made through like excellent, mm-hmm. like excellent right running and and you know just these sharp, like quick twitch moves that that he just has in abundance, right? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a few, and I think we'll, and there's a few that we'll talk about who've got like a really deep toolbox, if you will. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, I think we'll we'll come up to him, but Malik Neighbors is. LSU counterpart, uh, Brian Thomas. He yeah. he's the same. He's yeah. the same. Yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll get to we'll get to Mr. Thomas a little bit later. So you'd have <laughs> uh, you'd have neighbors in there at your at your one hundred three at at one hundred four. Is that when you pull the trigger, Drake Mayer? Is he push way down the the list for you? I'd 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 stick him kind of around eight nine. So. If, yeah, so I'll push him down, and so I think the rest, the rest of the list I gave you, mm. um, we can. I, I think we'll go on, go on and just add one or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah. so after neighbors, yeah. you had the other guy that these two are in the same sort of tier for me. I'm finding it hard to to separate them. Yeah. Maybe Landon spot will will change that. But next, you got Romo Dunze, right? This guy who's just like unstoppable for Washington. Yeah, I mean, like. He has been helped by the fact that one, he has Penix throwing to him, and he's yeah. insane. Yeah. Um. Uh. I I put a bet on him to to win the Heisman, and also for Washington to win Ooh. the uh, college football championship at the beginning of the year. Nice. Um. So that was my kind of take before the season started, and uh, that's kind of still rolling, which is good. Yeah. Um. But as well as having a great quarterback. They had a like the holy trinity of Odunze, Jalen McMillan, Jalen yeah. uh, Polk. Polk yeah. Those three together were just like, where, like, opposition defense. Where do we go? Yeah. Where do we go from here? Yeah. Um, so I think that helped him, but he he's really, really talented. Really talented. Yeah. It Works was really well on the outside. Anytime there was single coverage as well, Penix just like <laughs> like you could see him smiling like before the yeah. start. He just throw it to it and it would just be that'll be game over. Like yeah. he's just so good. I thought his best trait was the way he like, even though he's a big guy and can win like contested catches, he still makes the effort to like get that space in very different way to neighbors. Like he's so physical, like he can get that space where his neighbors yeah, are so yeah. quick. But I just think both those guys are going to translate really well. They're both locked yeah. in. It's like early first round picks in the, in the proper NFL yeah. draft. Right? I, I wish on like for comparisons um, when looking at college, like trying to work out maybe who's inspired them from a pro mm-hmm. level, or you kind of see some similarities. Sometimes you see ex teammates yeah. um, uh, in them, but like um, so, like uh, Harrison, for example, was some gonna make a big leap here yeah he has some elements of like Tyreek Hill in him mm-hmm. uh, obviously he doesn't have the same speed I think we're expecting Harrison to get probably around the 4.3 mark yeah um so he's obviously not as quick but it's kind of that just taking things in stride yeah um whereas Adunze and Neighbors find it really hard to make like a like for like comparison yeah um because in terms of size, 
Um, and players who are similar at the same size, like Odunze is probably closer to a Mike Evans yeah. than he is to like a slot receiver. Yeah. For example, like a your typical slot receiver. Um, and that's that's one thing I found quite interesting about him. He seems to be like a diamond in the rough, if you will, mm. in terms of his physical um, stature. Yeah, he's like a hybrid kind of player, right? He's got the size, but he can. He's also got these like sort of smaller skills as well. It's just like it's almost like he in high school. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's almost like he was smaller in high school and then had a growth spurt. Mm. So he has all these skills, right. like from before, from like a smaller receiver, and then just grew yeah. two foot and like into this monster, right? It's like he had to grind big time, and now he's got just an added skill set. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I think yeah, both neighbors and Dunze will do will do great thing. Like I think probably depending on where they land, but it's like right off the bat, they seem like people like can hit the ground running. So those guys are are locked in there at uh, at three and four. So at five, then where do you think you going back to the receiver? Well, you going running back? Are you going to? I'm going to go running back running here. Running? I'm going to go <laughs> running back here. Yeah. Oh yes. Um, this is your guy. It, this is this is the it, guy. You, uh, is this the guy that's above all else? Well, no, it's not. It's actually, I, I think that as the kind of draft process goes on, mm-hmm. um, we'll see the guy I'm thinking of climb those rankings. Yeah. But right now, like without a doubt, Travion Henderson yeah. is, I think, my initial 106 to you, um, slash 105. There we go. Yeah. We'll, we'll no. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I ruined all your graphics. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> um, so, I mean, and then, like, in terms of NFL comparison, and, like, I mean this in the best possible way, James Conner. Like, yeah. it really reminds me of James Conner. Mm-hmm. Uh, just kind of really gets his head down. Tough, physical, resilient. Like, he's a... Uh, you just keep giving him the ball and he'll just keep going. Um, and I think he's got the capacity to grow as well. I think his yeah. his footwork um, could do with some improvement, mm. not a huge amount. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think that, that that could be nurtured very easily if he's put into the right position. Yeah, he's, he's someone that at the start of the year, so obviously I've said a couple of times like on, on the show before, this is my first year like watching everything live as it happens. And there were two guys at the start of the year. I was like, what the hell? What is all this hype about? It was Rocket Raheem Sanders and Trayvon Henderson. And sort of Henderson has just come on so much, like the last sort mm-hmm. of five, six games. And I can see it now. I'm like, okay, no, this guy really is the real one. And he like is currently, I think, consensus at the running back one, whether he'll end up there, we don't know. But yeah, the last five games in particular, he's looked really good. I like that he's got sort of safe hands as well. He's not like unbelievable. Like he's not like a Christian McCaffrey out there, but he's someone that you mm-hmm. can throw the ball to and he can catch it, which is so important for your teams, yeah. right? Yeah, he's absolutely he's, he's super, super solid at, at running back. So he's the first running back off the board. Who who are you going next after Travion Henderson? Uh well, I don't know if this is too high. But uh 107, I put Brock Bowers. Yes. I love it. Um I honestly think he could end up being anywhere between third yeah. and eighth yeah. off the board. Um he's so good. <laughs> and it's <laughs> like he's got so much speed. Um I've seen him play snaps at running back. He's just a big bodied receiver. Um yeah. But he he's uh I think again, he's another one of these people who it's hard to, to give a NFL comparison because he's very unique mm-hmm. in what he has to offer. Um last season's class, Sam Laporta was my yeah. favorite tight yeah. end going in uh, ahead of Kincaid, uh, ahead of Musgrave, ahead mm-hmm. of Maya. Cool. And uh, and Laporta has some similarities. Is that he likes to get around the field, but Bowers yards after catch, yeah, just people bounce off him, and he, you know, 
so quick-footed. He has a lot of moves. Once yeah, he's got the ball. He's super nimble, right? He's not your stereotypical big hulking tight end, but he's he seems to not be missing any strength. Like he's a bit shorter than than a lot of these guys, but he seems to be just as strong as those guys as well. Yeah. You're right. People bounce off him, right? Exactly. Yeah, so he's he's someone that's great. If you're playing in tight end premium leagues, he'll be right up there at the top. You just gotta gotta hope he's gonna land some. There's plenty of space for tight ends at the minute as well. So hopefully yeah. Bowers will land, you know, for anybody apart from Arthur right. Smith. That'll be that'll be absolutely <laughs> ideal, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. So, so moving so, on. Sorry, sorry, go ahead, Ali. No, no, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say I would probably put Drake May after him. Yeah, so we would slot we would slot Drake May and I'll, we'll pull up who Drake that he would he yeah. would slot in for now after after Brock Bowers. We gotta cover Drake May. Who's um yeah. who's following then after after Brock Bowers, Drake May, then you got another running back, do you? I do have another running back. Um and again, it's not the one that I think is probably going to be the best. Um, uh, I've got Blake Corum. Yeah. Um, really tough guy. Yeah. And he, he looks like he has a smaller frame than everyone, mm-hmm. but he doesn't. He's a really big guy. He's like um, five foot eight, five foot eight and a half. And he's got 97 kilos, so 165. He- Solid, 70 right? pounds. yeah, yeah, he's solid. Um, and he uh, he has such a really versatile skill set, yeah. And there are times when I, I, I have looked at him and been like, Oh, he's not gonna make that. So, I should uh, should say I'm a Michigan fan. Um, so, <laughs> so I'm like, Well, he's not gonna make that, and then he just delivers and delivers and delivers. and Every time he's got the ball in his hands, it's kind of exciting, really exciting to watch. I just like the most prodigious like nose for the end zone. Like it is uncanny. Yeah. Like it's it's almost like you know, a couple of years ago when you had Derrick Henry like on the two, like, well, not like there's there's no debating what's gonna happen here. It's gonna go in. Like it's kind of like that with Blake Corum, right? He just gets in the end zone. Uh, like I'm sure I've seen him take a step back and watch three people run into each other and just kind of trot around, and it's it's like uh, mesmerizing to watch. Yeah, he's great, and hopefully, I mean, it's so hard now with running, but like so many people are in these committees, right? But he could be someone that you know is a real headache for for people who own the other running back, right, on on his team, because he's going to be someone that. That's his skill set is around those sort of short yardage areas. And he's someone that's going to come in like he could be like a David Montgomery, right? That comes in and like steals mm. all steals all the glory like off other people, right? Yeah, I mean I think if if the setup stays the same, I think Washington would probably yeah. be like a a really good spot for him. Cause then he'd just be pinching snaps off Brian Robinson. Um <laughs> yeah, no, right. Yeah. Another yeah. Michigan running back. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be a good duo, right? We got we got Blake Corn. Then who's following up Blake Corn? I got to tell you, this is a name we've not had so far on the three mock draft, but I absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we mentioned him a little bit earlier. So this is Brian Thomas. Yeah. Um, how can you not? <laughs> He's uh, <laughs> this. He, you know, Malik Neighbors gets all the headlines. Yeah. Um. Uh, but Brian Thomas is just as efficient. And I would say in terms of separation, uh, especially around the end zone, yeah. he has got so many moves. Like yeah. uh, he has got so many moves. And, and like opposition cornerbacks that he's up against, they're of a good standard. Um, so usually one or two moves will it will, will work for him. Yeah, but he can. He can. He's showcasing three, four, sometimes five, on a single snap, and it's like he doesn't need to do that now. Sure, but he's showcasing what he can do. And if he goes up to, if he goes up against higher standard cornerbacks, yeah, they're going to struggle. Like uh, talking NFL level cornerbacks are going to struggle against him. Yeah, absolutely, and that that kind of is highlighted. Like he is, he leads NCAA in receiving touchdowns. He's on 15, so that is, you know, one 
won more than your Marvin Harrison Juniors, like Malik Neighbors, all all of these guys that you know we are expecting to go high end. Roma Dunze, mm-hmm. like he's got more than all of those guys because of those you know moves he talked about. And he's big. He's like six. He must be six four, right? He's big guy. Six four, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. fast. Like that's what I. That's one of the things we maybe didn't speak about earlier in the sort of traits of the class. These receivers, mm-hmm. not like last year at all, right? They're big oh. guys. And it's kind of just like, you know, it could be half a second faster, but it's still half a second faster. Yeah, um, yeah Neighbors, Thomas, Odinze, McMillan. Um, there's a few others that we haven't mentioned yet. Um, yeah. But there's really good strength and uh, speed as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we got... Next up, there's another receiver. We were kind of talking about this guy before the show, right? And this is someone that we're maybe expecting to go around here, but you kind of mentioned a guy like Keyshawn Butte as an example of someone who started around here <laughs> last year, right? And then started right. to slip. But we both identified yeah. Keon Coleman as a guy that might start to slip from here, right? Yeah, I think the more and more tape that people will watch, they'll see that kind of thing. His route running is very straightforward, very simple. Mm. Unlike Brian Thomas, he doesn't really have much to offer in terms of uh, moves to shake off receivers. He seems to work well. He he seems to have his best games against poor defenses who blow coverage often. Yeah, and whilst whilst that is a skill in itself, um, looking back at the tape. And scrutinizing it, you see that he really had an easy job, and it yeah. wasn't that he was making them miss. Um, and uh, you know, nothing. Uh, sh- should sh- I should caveat by saying like he's obviously produced throughout the whole season, yeah, and he's done really well. And there was some game. I think the first week of the college season turned up with three touchdowns. Week one. Um, was probably helped that Johnny Wilson yeah. was injured for a few games as well, mm-hmm. so that he saw a lot more of the lion share. Um, and then kind of curtailed a little bit once Travis was rested last couple of weeks. Um, but so I mean he has he has some talent, there's yeah. no doubt about that. And in terms of where I think his peak could be is like Michael Pittman. Yeah. To compare him with a mm-hmm. you know current receiver, um, he has very similar frame. Uh, his movement's quite similar, um, but I think in most of the leagues that I was in, Pittman was going third round, early fourth yeah. round. Yeah, and whilst whilst that's probably like too low, mm-hmm. um, you know that's probably where we'll end up seeing. Keon Coleman, I think, third round, third round pick. Yeah, it could end up yeah dropping just like yeah. Keyshawn Butte. He, what he went on draft? I don't think he'll go on draft. Like maybe Ke- Butte is a bit harsh, right? That's maybe- yeah. No, I mean, yeah. he was picked. I think it was. I think it was a sixth round or something by the Patriots. Yeah. Um yeah. But I, but I, if I was to redo this draft, I would put another running back here, and I'd put the guy I've kind of not mentioned up to now, which is Trey Benson, yeah. uh, and. Yeah, Dalvin Cook's about him. I think he's really, really tough. Um, there's a few running backs I've listed kind of after we go through the first yeah. round. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of them have very similar traits that will adjust well to the NFL. And I think in terms of full package, Benson has has it all. I thought I'd mention him because he was teammates with uh, yeah. Keon Coleman. <laughs> yeah, I really like Benson, and we'll maybe we'll maybe chat about him with a couple of these other guys in a bit. But you got to to wrap up sort of the first round. You have two two quarterbacks, both in contention with the Heisman. Obviously, we hope the second one wins it for for your bank account. But well, let's chat about let's chat about the first one. That's Jaden Daniels. This guy, I, he couldn't have played any better this year. Like I don't think he physically could have. No, and actually, like uh, I had him in one of my college fantasy football leagues this season, yeah. Um, and the rest of my team was wasn't great, but he mm-hmm. he was standout. I mean, he was the highest scoring, the biggest fantasy producing quarterback in, in yeah. college, or biggest fantasy producing player in college football this yeah. season. Um, 
And after I picked him, I even had some sort of slight regrets. I was like, ah, I should have gone with Penix. Yeah. And then, but then obviously hindsight's a great thing, but, um, yeah. you know, Daniel's really lived up to his potential. Um, and I think last season he was kind of, yeah. And it, it could have gone either way, mm-hmm. but he really seems to have stepped up his game and he's like, Pro ready, you know. Yeah, in, he in, looks in terms of being able to pass the ball away, game management, um, like his game management's better than Drake May's, in my opinion. Yeah. Um. Uh. And uh, yeah, there's another couple of quarterbacks who I think have a lot better game management than him, mm-hmm. and they're not actually in my top twelve. Yeah, and that, but that will probably change with time. Um, it's it's hard not to include two quarterbacks who are going for the Heisman Trophy yeah. in your first round picks, and I, and that's basically because they're going to get the most coverage. Um, any you know, casual uh, rookie drafters are probably going to look to see who was playing in the College Football Championship, yeah. who was playing in the Sugar Bowl and the Rose Bowl. How do they do in those games? And those are the ones that they're going to see on yeah. tape the most. Yeah. Whereas, Whereas the, real one, the real ones know the Breedy Cooks where the money's at, right, Alex? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking JJ McCarthy. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I mean, we've got Jaden Daniels here. And, and and then I put the next one, I put Michael Penix as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's hard to leave him out of yeah. uh, a first round draft, especially if it's a super flex league. Um, yeah, it very depending on landing spots, it could very easily be four or five quarterbacks going in the first round. Yeah, easily, yeah. Um, there are definitely four or five teams that need a quarterback. Yeah. Um, and arguably, Caleb Williams, Jay Daniels, Penix, JJ McCarthy, who I mentioned, uh, Drake May, Hartman, Bo Nix. Bo Nix, yeah. Yeah. Solid. Um, Carson Beck. Yeah. Spencer Rattler. You know, Quinn Ewers. He's staying, he's staying put, right? He's staying, he's staying yeah. He's staying, yeah. That's yeah. 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 uh, true. Um, yeah, I mean, there's more than a few that could do a job in, in the NFL, I think. There's a lot, right? Michael, but my big thing with Michael Penix, I'm trying to like look at him and try and compare him to other things that I keep coming to Tua, but I think it's just because he's left handed. Like, I can't help it. Yeah, I, I'm the same. I kind of think, I think Tua every time I see him. Yeah. Even though, even though, to his brother is in this round in, in this yeah. draft class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he was he was my he was my QB three in most in in my uh, college fantasy football leagues this season, and he he was a great performer for Maryland. Is it Maryland, right? Is he Maryland? Yeah, Maryland. yeah. that's yeah, right. He, yeah, he's fun to watch. He's a lot more of a scrambler, right? He runs about a bit. Yeah, and I think he he was at Alabama as well. Yeah, uh, and transferred. Maybe more than once, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, he's he's another player who's destined to go in the third day. But he's a really good talent. Yeah, Michael Michael Panic. So he he looks pro ready, right? He looks yeah. like he can come in. Like I know I've got a friend of the show, Ali Cook, who's a big Bucks fan. He's he's determined to get Michael Panic at the Bucks. I think that'll be a nice fit. Oh God, yeah, him throwing to Evans and Goodwin, Godwin, yeah. yeah. That'll be that'll be really really nice. So I think yeah, Penix and Daniels, they're they're both guys that probably will end up in in the first round of your of your rookie drafts. But we got we got loads more people to talk about. We got some of these second round players. We got some sleepers as well. Do you wanna do you wanna go by position or have you just got a couple of names you wanna rattle off? Let's do position. Yeah, I think uh, I say I kind of rattled through a few of the uh, the quarterbacks yeah. already. But JJ McCarthy, I think um, yeah. you know. In terms of current quarterbacks that are out there and game management, maybe it's too early to say, but he has very similar attributes to CJ Stroud. Mm-hmm. Um, he can probably move a lot quicker than CJ Stroud as well if he needs to. Stroud doesn't tend to run unless he really, really has to, whereas yeah. McCarthy, you could design plays for him to run as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um Kind of in the way that Tannehill works. Mm-hmm. That makes yeah. sense. And he, um, he's got an absolute. I w- 
it's high, he doesn't have like necessarily like a cannon of an arm in terms of downfield, but the zip that he gets at his passes is really impressive. It, it's just like a complete. It, he's kind of what's the way to describe this? If you were reading a textbook on how to pass as a quarterback, yeah, he shows every single and Stroud's the same. Yeah, you know, really skilled, really technical uh, passes of the ball. Yeah. And I think, I think you know, he will probably be a third, fourth round pick. Um, you know, but he still has real good talent, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's hard not to to see someone like that do well in the NFL. Yeah, he could have a similar route that uh, we've seen uh, this year out of Will Levis, right, where he might not come in and start right away, but probably will get a chance by the end of the year next year, right? Yeah, potentially. Um, could see him going to the Giants. Yeah, perfect maybe spot, not. Right? Maybe not with their first pick because I think they're kind of in mm-hmm. around the top five. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but maybe a second round. They use their second rounder on him. Oh, it makes sense. I think that makes. They'll definitely get that far. Yeah. 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 Um, got McCarthy. Any other quarterbacks that you've been keeping an eye yeah, on? Yeah, Sam Hartman. He was uh, he yeah. was a loyal servant of mine this season in yeah. my college fantasy football leagues. Um, he is really good. I think yeah. he could have. People say that he hurt his draft capital by not announcing for the draft last year mm-hmm. uh, after a really good season with Wake Forest. Um, but I think, and there's a few players that kind of benefit from seeing how multiple teams work. Yeah. There's always positives to that. And like going from Wake Forest to Notre Dame, where the pressure is arguably. A lot higher. Mm-hmm. Um, playing in a team that's playing well and being the creator of that on offense as well, um, he he should it should be evident to NFL coaches that he is going to be able to pick up a playbook and roll with it quickly. Yeah, that's the advantage of you know playing for more than one team mm. uh, under different coaches and different coaching styles so i think you know he could be a useful asset and i I think he'll end up being as a a backup initially um but he'll be a very solid backup uh like if you look at burrow for example Mm -hmm. going down jake browning Mm -hmm. not really getting much out of him um whereas i think if sam hartman was there he could offer a lot more. A hundred percent. Yeah. There's a lot of these backups that that seem like you're like, this can't be as good as it gets sort of thing. Yeah, right? I, mean, I, think it has I, th- to be. I think we'll see a, a bit of an exodus of yeah. kind of junk receivers yeah. and junk quarterbacks as a result of this 24 class and last year's class being quite good. Yeah. Um, in, yeah. in the main. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. Can we, have you have you have you seen Brady Cook? This is my guy, Brady Cook, right? I, yeah. I really I really enjoy watching him play. I don't know if he's definitely coming out. If like if I were him, I might stay another year. But I loved watching him play. I think he's mm-hmm. another example of a really good game manager. He set an SEC record for amount of passes without an interception this season. Yeah. Really, really big fan of this guy. Yeah, he's great. He's really good. Um, and I mean, Bo Nix did that last yeah. season. Yeah, stayed for a fifth season, and you know I don't think that's affected his draft capital Please. too much. Uh, I think he'll probably fall around the same place. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, and he's arguably got a lot more experience than some of the other guys going into the NFL draft, and that yeah. that translates. So we'll see there, and then Carson Beck yep. again, solid. Um, Really good game manager. Um, I think he'll end up going undrafted, though. I think he's a kind of... Yeah. I think he's just at the tail end of this group of, of quarterbacks. Like Stetson yeah. Bennett squeaked in, right? He just got drafted, but barely, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Stetson Bennett was third or fourth round. Mm. Um, but he... But again, that could have been anyone... That could have been any of... That yeah. tier of yeah, Thompson Robinson, yeah, O'Connell, yeah. 
Clay and Tune, Jake Hayner, they all kind of went around the same spot. Yeah. Including, and uh, I mean, with last year's class, there was obviously the front couple of two, and then he went Levis, and then it was a big drop down to Hooker. Yeah. And then yeah. after that, it was kind of free for all. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think, and I think this set of quarterbacks is kind of, you should place them a lot higher than last year's, for example. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. They're looking, they're looking really good. And at running back, Alex, I'll just read you the list. I was trying to get these running backs into rankings, but I find it incredibly hard because these are the people that I've enjoyed watching at running back this year. We got McClellan, Hunter, Shipley, Sanders, ETN, Benson, Milton, Neal, Davis, Jordan, Corum, Edwards, Schrader, Hampton, Estime, Henderson, Gordon, Irving, Martinez, Wright, Brooks, Lloyd, Johnson, and Allen. That's a hell of a lot. Did you say Blake Watson? Possibly. I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> They're all on a big list. I'm like, yeah. all these guys are good. Yeah. No, a lot of them aren't aren't quite coming out. Like Ollie Gordon's not coming out till next year. He looks really good. But yeah, yeah. a lot of these guys are coming out this year. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a few guys. I mentioned Henderson, Benson, and, and Corum already. Yeah. Jonathan Brooks, I really like. Yeah, he got injured though, right? Was he the guy that got, got injured? injured? Yeah, did get injured. But um, I think with uh, Jonathan Brooks, when you see him play, you can see that he's played with Bijan Robinson. Yeah, is that Bijan's younger brother at Texas, or is it just another Robinson that they have? I, forgot I am not sure. Him. Yeah, because he sure. kind of runs a bit like <laughs> Bijan. Yeah, but he's he's there. But yeah, you can tell he has played with them. You're right. Yeah, you can see like in terms of when on the run, kind of vision. Yeah, and that thing. I mean, you can obviously teach it, um, but some people don't like to learn, and you yeah. can tell that Brooks likes to learn. Uh, yeah, and you know his vision's it's great. Um, after receiving the ball, Braylon Allen, I like. Yep. yep. He has the capacity to be like a a Derek Henry. He's a bowling ball, right? He's just yeah. He's nineteen as well. He's so young. Yeah, yeah. I think you know he could do with another year, but you know, he, yeah. He declared last week. He is said. He's, okay, he's in. Yeah. yeah, he's coming out at nineteen. Like that's all right. Yeah, yeah. and and what's quite similar, I, I guess, is that he probably saw Abanikanda. Yeah, um, and he's likely to be to have to figure a lot more next season for the Jets. Um, but he was outstanding for Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. He was really good, um, and I think he went around the third round. Yeah, I believe fourth so. round, and so and that's kind of if a team sees the same uh, kind of potential in Braylon Allen, that's where he'll go as well. I think uh, Shipley, yeah, great. Yeah. Marquis Irving, great. Yeah, Marquis Irving, great player. He was such a really good chip for Bo Nix and Oregon this year. Yeah. Um, Shipley, really good. Um, I must admit, I didn't watch too much of Clemson this season. Not a whole lot to watch. Like, they're, yeah, I liked <laughs> but, um, Brian, Tyler Brown, the receiver before the show. Yeah. Big mm -hmm. fan of him. Will Shipley did well. So yeah. about it. I mean, was it Klubnik as their quarterback? He looked bad. Yeah, Klubnik. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, I, um, I, I wasn't a fan of Klubnik. I thought I thought he was not ready. Okay. But, yeah, I think yeah, he might, yeah. he's a young guy. Maybe he does. He doesn't look polished at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's what a sophomore, right? So I mean, yeah, yeah. He'll. Uh, it's kind of. It's a, It's really weird because we shouldn't really be allowed to judge him yet. If yeah. that makes sense, yeah. <laughs> we can only judge people in their draft years. I was more fun to do it that way. <laughs> I right, will see you in two years. And be like, I always, yeah, right, public. yeah, I'd say yeah. right, exactly. Yeah, um, Estime, I, I, I like, I think he's Holy, that guy's a monster, like, yeah, but yeah, but we, we've seen that before in AJ yeah. Dillon, right? We have, yeah. No, it's still um, still, I've, I've watched that Chiefs game. Like, I'm, that's still too soon. Watching AJ Dillon like tear apart the Chiefs, I like couldn't believe what yeah. I was doing. It was so <laughs> hard to watch. Yeah, yeah. I, but and that, I mean, that's kind of been a long time coming with Dillon as well, because it's kind of everyone's been waiting for that to happen. Yeah, yeah. But estimate seems like a 
a real good outright like and just someone you can you can give the ball and hopefully yeah he'll use that use just, that side of the yeah. yeah yeah absolutely um i think i think dylan did get unlucky going to the yeah packers and having to sit behind aaron um well still sitting behind aaron jones yeah um yeah absolutely uh so depending on where estime lands that could be a steam a train a steam train nice. a steam train I like that. And then <laughs> the other guys i think that i'm real real interested in at the running back position i've got uh red davis i really like the look of red davis at kentucky yeah kentucky yeah yeah he looks a real player as does um De- oh, is it Devin Neal? Am I getting that right? Devin, Devin Neal. Neal. Yeah, Kansas. Kansas, yeah. Yeah, Devin Neal looks great. And then also Marion Hampton as well, I think. Those are three guys again. Those are like those second round pick players we talked about before. Like you want to gather those up and because one of those guys is is probably going to hit and the other two are probably going to bomb, but it's going to be so hard to tell who, right? Yeah, and Marion Hampton kind of grew into that role as season progressed because yeah. Yeah, they, they started off the season uh, North Carolina running a uh, a committee yeah uh and that that's soon obliterated he obliterated that <laughs> yeah he really did just yeah he just took off and i don't know if he ended up no i think ollie gordon overtook him but at one stage he was the leading yards uh tally he had the highest amount of mm-hmm. yards in college football i think ollie gordon pipped him at, at the end there but yeah he was he was right up there for sure and we talked about a lot of the, the depth of these receivers as well, Alex. You got a couple of more receivers that you like to look up to. Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, just before we move on, Blake Watson at Memphis and uh, Frank Gore Jr. Southern Miss. Oh, Frank. Uh, yes. And Kendall Mil- Kendall Milton, Georgia. <laughs> he looks good as well, Kendall Milton. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. But I, he'll he'll probably end up in a backup role to start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, Frank Gore Jr. Reminds me of Frank Gore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just it's really crazy. And Blake Watson, um, you know, those Memphis running backs, Gibson, yeah. Gainwell, Watson, he's got something about him. Um, their quarterback always likes to throw short, and he was always kind of just in front of the uh, uh-huh. the scrimmage there. So he's, uh, he's an intriguing one. I think yeah. we'll probably hear his name a lot more as the draft. Okay. Um, Let's keep Brian Blake Watson. Yeah. yeah. It progresses and stuff. Yeah. Right. So, receivers. Sorry. Sorry to. Yeah. That's not um, right. So, we've said Neighbors, Thomas, Adinze. Yep. 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 Uh, Coleman. Yep. Harrison. Okay. Yes. I know where we are now. Okay. So, we <laughs> have, I guess, Egbuka is probably yeah. the one that's first on everyone's list. Yep. Um, He's a really decent slot receiver. Um, probably similar to Zay Flowers in a way. Yeah, yeah. Just need to hope that he doesn't end up at the Ravens as well. <laughs> um, it's just yeah. like the it's like wide receiver cemetery, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess we have also Xavier Leggett. Um, yeah. South Carolina. No. Yeah, he, he was on fire at the start of the year he kind of tailed off a little bit sort of such yeah. Carolina, i suppose but yeah kind of did tail off towards the end of the year you got obviously your your washington receivers who you talk, spoke about before as well right who are just all yes. of them like i don't McMillan, think polk, polk. i don't think polk is eligible no i don't think so but mcmillan is yeah mcmillan is yeah. really good oh, as is another i also not eligible but another mcmillan i cannot pronounce his first name to save my life it's like ted Teti <laughs> or <Like, laughs> nailed it. Yeah, uh, at Arizona, <laughs> he is phenomenally good, but he's another guy to look out for in 25, 26. Yeah. Like, Teti te- or uh, uh, Teti Roa. You, you should be the host. Of my good- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's real good. Yeah. But again, yeah. it's hard not to get excited. That's what I find from watching like college football real properly this year. It's hard not to get excited for like. The next class or the next, like you're already, yeah, yeah, forward, right? Yeah, uh, we'll have to get you in some of we'll have to get you in a college fantasy league this next year wow. if you're not already in some. Uh, yeah, I'll absolutely get involved. With that. <laughs> uh, who else yeah. who have you got then? Who else you got at, at the wide receiver position then? That worthy, so Xavier Worthy and probably AD Mitchell as well. Both of those yep, two, yep, yep. yeah. Um, Worthy's another guy who's really handy in and around the end zone. Mm-hmm. 
another guy who's really shifty, similar to Brian Thomas. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but, but I think, who is it? I think, yeah, going back to Legette, he really, really reminds me of Jarvis Landry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Um, and then who we said Johnny Wilson a little bit earlier. Um, yeah, he's real in because he's six seven. Yeah, right. He's a big guy. That's a weird that's a that's a real interesting and he doesn't I would actually weirdly enough, I would like to see him use that six foot seven a bit more. Like he makes a lot of passes like along the ground and yeah. like passes you wouldn't expect, but like you're six seven, mate. Get up and get it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean like what's that? The it's Dylan no no Dylan Par, Donald Parham. He plays for the Chargers. Yeah, for it, right? Yeah, yeah, about the same, right? And uh, I mean, he has got the Colts written all over him. Yeah, they love big guys. They yeah, absolutely love big guys. Yeah, uh, so I think that's probably where he'll end up. <laughs> yeah, in the I third think... round or something. Yeah, you're right. The more the more you think about that, the more you can definitely, <laughs> definitely see that one happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Oh, we've got. Um, Again, I don't know if he's done. I need to. I need to really make a list of people who have it. Is it Trey Trey Harris over at Ole Miss? Oh yeah, Trey Harris. Yeah, yeah. Trey yeah, Harris, good player as well. I like. I'd be like. Yes, he is. Yeah. Uh, I think he was another one who, uh, who was injured as well during the season. Yeah. Yeah. Again, there's there's so many, and then oh, the big oh, of course, someone who was in the top ten on the last show, Troy Franklin. Like, absolutely, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> really, really nice route runner over there in Oregon. He. He could be right up there, like in in the first round. But then, if it's so it's so hard to tell. We said at the start of the show, it's it's way too early. But there's an abundance of talent here. At least that's what we think so far. Anyway, right? Yeah, and it's it's really weird because there's so many different factors, and sometimes they kind of exceed exude the actual talent of the player just to yeah. get hype built around them. And like sentiment, such an important thing for each of these guys going into the draft process. And it's like why it pays to have a good agent, a good team, a good, yeah. you know, it helps to be make sure you're in with the right trainer, yeah, uh, ahead of the combine. Uh, like these little things, they all kind of add up. Um, and the combine shouldn't be as important as it is, <laughs> no, but you yeah. know, it matters, so you need to do it and you need yeah. to do it well. Yeah, we've seen yeah. enough players like get absolutely like boosted up like up the ranks. Like Anthony Richardson, one of the best things I did last year I really liked was like recording down the the amount the players rose or fall like because of the combine and it was just extraordinary. Like Anthony yeah. Richardson was going in the second round sometimes in some of these drafts and then the combine hit mm-hmm. and it's like locked in at 102. And it's like, wow, yeah. that is that is incredible. So that's going to happen here. There is a trap, I think, and I think you might agree, Alex. Joe Milton, look out. That's a, that's a trap, right? That is a trap, yeah. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's going to blow up the combine. Yeah. And, uh, again, there is, you know, it's a meat market. You yeah. know, they're going to make they're going to make him look as, as good as they possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's all about translation into the pro game. I think every team will think, oh, we have a guy with an arm like that. Yeah. We can we can cultivate him however we want. Yeah. And I don't think it will translate. I think he's too much of an individual yeah. um, to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. We'll see. I can I'm usually wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm th- I'm with you right there. I don't think he's quite got the the talent to to translate. We actually joked beforehand all fair that he could end up playing tight end and actually be pretty good there. Actually, with the yeah. physicality that he's got. But <laughs> are there any are there any tight ends that you've got apart from obviously the of mighty Brock Bowers? Any tight yeah. ends standing out for you? Because I've I've got one in particular I really like. Who's your guy? <laughs> My guy is uh, Chavion Sanders of Texas. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's nice. He's a nice player. Very easy on the eye to watch. Yeah. Um, I think between... But, but there's like a huge gap after that, I think. Yeah. Brock Bowers is in his own class. Octavian Sanders is there. And then after that, you could probably scramble for like Ben Sinnott. 
Kansas yeah, State. Yeah, Ben Sennett. He's very yeah. good. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if he's... I, I remember uh, you liked the tweet I put up about Ben Sennett. I was like, oh, Alex is yeah. Ben Sennett guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Jared Wiley single-handedly won me my championship this year um, with his two touchdowns in the last week. So uh, he's good at TCU. Really like him. Okay. Uh, I did. I was quite high on Jalen Conyers at the beginning of the season, Arizona State, but kind of right. tailed off. Kind of lost a bit of uh, love for him, but I think of the of this set, uh, Brock Bowers, Sanders, Sinner, and maybe um, Jared Wiley are the ones to, to keep an eye on. I'm trying to find the name of. We had I don't know if you'll know him. I had uh, Michael Bauer on here last year, and his big guy. Oh man, I can't see it. It's yeah, Ben Urasik. That's his big guy. I've, I've not oh, seen um, any. Potentially, yes. Stanford, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a big Ben Urasic guy. I need to watch more of him. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, there's yeah. there's a huge, huge amount of talent here. And I think this is pretty normal for this time of year. Everyone's like, this guy's amazing. This guy's amazing. This guy's amazing. And then, yeah, you dig into a little bit more. This this might look a little bit different. But Alex, that, that does bring us to the end of the show. I love the depth that we went into there, just kind of showcasing the amount of talent that, that could be available here if everyone declares them. Um, just wanted to say, mate, thank you so much for, for coming on to the show. Do you want to remind everyone if they if they don't know, where can they where can they find you online? What are you up to? Um, so you can find me on, on Twitter at Dynasty Guru NFL. Um currently I'm writing a weekly IDP starts it for yeah. Fantasy Six Pack. I also do a, a couple of works for RPO football and five yard college. So I tend to work more with the college uh yeah work on during the off season so when yep. it's right and ready um yeah and that's me absolutely brilliant and thanks yeah. again everybody for watching if you've not already make sure you hit that like and that that subscribe button as well we're we're on the march up actually it'd be good to hit a few targets coming up and and you can help with that by hitting that subscribe button as well and that brings us to the end of the show ladies and gentlemen thank you once again for joining us alex thank you as ever and for those for those keen long time hot seat listeners you're right alex was the first ever guest of the dynasty hot seat so always very special to to have him on but for me and for alex that's going to do us for today remember if anything dynasty you need to know keep it locked on the certified inferno we'll see you next time